situation in Germany at the time that Hitler was appointed chancellor was was uh, essentially that the, the Nazi party was in parliament, they had the, the most seats, but not a majority. And there had been three federal elections in the previous year to the point, um, up to the point where Hitler was appointed chancellor. And the Nazis had increased their vo vote until the final election of that year of 1932, they had, their vote had dropped. And it looked like their um, rise had been peaked. And uh, there was a lot of dissension in the Nazi party. A lot of people didn't like Hitler's leadership. He, he refused to join the government unless he was appointed chancellor. So many people in the Nazi party uh, didn't pay their dues. They wanted out. They didn't feel uh, his way of doing things was the right way. And other people thought it wasn't radical enough. And they wanted a violent approach to taking over the government. And so that is the situation where we were at. The party was in financial trouble. Uh, he thought that it might be the end. And there was also another leader in the Nazi party who looked like he was ready to take over. So the whole point of my book is that this could all have been otherwise. Hitler was on the ropes. The Nazi party was on the ropes. We could have had no Third Reich. But circumstances led to a small election in the state of Lippa occurring in the month of January 1933. And this was the, the last hope for the Nazis. And this is what my book is about. This little tiny bit of history that almost, the, the, these moments in history that seem small, they often are very important, but they get lost in the momentous occur, events that occur afterwards. Like you can't compete with the Second World War uh, and, and to talk about a little election. But this is the origins of why we had the Third Reich. And essentially, he threw all his resources and all of the Nazi Party's resources into fighting this tiny election, this little state. And he used his own royalties from Mein Kampf, because the party was in such financial s dire straits. Uh, this was their last gasp. And the whole thing is that they, they won the election, but not really. They, just, they didn't win a majority, but they won the most votes of any party. And, he was able to spin doctor this into a massive victory, which then went on to influence the government of the day to appoint him chancellor. The government was in crisis and they needed a, ch a new chancellor and they reluctantly offered it to him because he was able to spin doctor this so-called election win into uh, that he was the most popular guy and he's the go-to guy to be elected, uh, to, to lead the country. And that's, so he wasn't elected chancellor he was appointed in a democratic process, but, uh, but clearly it was a lot of hoodwinking. And that's why I think my book is relevant to today, because we see the same thing in, in invading a country based around lo the lies of the weapons of mass destruction. So that's part of why I did the book, was to, uh, and why I considered it relevant, and why I worked seven years on it, is that I think it's an important uh, point that we're aware of how these things can be manipulated and the dire consequences that can follow from it. The Nazi party was looked upon by many people in, in uh, the Weimar Republic, which is what Germany was called at that time, uh, as, as a joke and as not uh, terribly serious in terms of uh, that they would ever form government. and. Many people thought they looked ridiculous in their, their get-ups, their uniforms and such, and that Hitler was a ridiculous figure. Uh, but they did have a paramilitary army behind them uh, called the SA, the stormtroopers. And so they carried out many brutal attacks on people, individuals, opponents. They murdered people. They were brought up on charges of, of this, uh, and they would often get off, or they would be convicted. But it, it, it seemed to be just a part of the milieu of that time, because you also had the Communist Party, which was very strong, and they had their own paramilitary group as well. I think it was called the Red Front. And uh, you had the Social Democrats, Socialists, they're very big, yeah, and you had the smaller conservative national parties who wanted to uh, go back to a monarchy. And so they wanted, so most of the parties wanted to overthrow the government. They actually didn't like the idea of a democratic government. The only party that uh, wanted to keep the system 
intact after the First World War was the Social Democratic Party, the Socialist Party. And so you had a lot of infighting, and Hitler and the Nazis was just another party. Lippe was a small state, a small Germany's smallest state of probably 100,000 people, and uh, a mostly rural state, mostly conservative, uh, a mixture of religions, but probably m mostly uh, Protestant, Lutheran, and the two old people, as I call them in the book, this is where they lived, and this is where the battle for for Germany was fought, essentially, on this election uh, in Lippa. And uh, so they are just two people who who uh, work at a newspaper, and they are members of the German Nationalist Party, a small party that uh, that uh, was actually opposed to the Nazis. But during the course of this election, for political expediency, they and their party are told by their leader to simply uh, not criticize the Nazis, not fight the election on a uh, uh, on, uh, on a real footing and basically let the Nazis win because their leader was hoping he would be part of a, a, a Hitler government and so it's a question of a political party throwing out its principles even if they're right-wing nationalist principles they don't even have any principles they they want to um, for the sake of gaining some minor bit of power they're willing to sell out their own people and so these old people who are dedicated party members um, just go along and don't question it and don't criticize the Nazis and they see how the Nazis bully them and and uh, and people start to take the Nazi party more seriously because they're not being opposed and so that's a fundamental part of my book is is, is showing that and in the end I discovered through my own research into this election, and there's not a lot of information around, you really have to dig, is that the party leader at the last minute had a change of heart, and he wrote uh, an article up, uh, that's going to be published uh, s criticizing and damning the Nazis and damning Hitler, and this might have changed everything had it been published in the newspaper, but at the last minute it was pulled, it was never used. And we don't quite know why, we don't, I don't know the full reasons, but it's, it's, it's a pivotal part of my um, story and it becomes a piece of art in itself, the metal plate where the article is written, the headline becomes part of something that the old people give Louise that then she turns into art and so that's again part of the connection between the past and the present and utilizing history to, to, to make future, to make present.